This is a completely ferromagnetic card, meaning magnets will stick to it. Some time ago I was really excited to work on making these, but for some reason I didn't finish them, and I think I remember why. It's not that completely ferromagnetic cards are bad, but when you compare them to the alternatives, it's more work with only a little more flair. There is a 0.2 mm thick sheet of metal inside this card. Quick note, like actual magnetic cards, it's just a mess. This is my kitchen fridge set, and the cards just stick together, and it's really annoying to have to take them apart. I will now present you everything that makes ferromagnetic cards amazing, then I'll go through every other alternative that is both cheaper and easier to make, that still achieves the same goal. For those of you who haven't heard of Inscription, it's a card game where you attach patches to upgrade cards. In the game they can be put anywhere on the entire front side, so having an all magnetic card really comes in handy when making these fan made cards. Otherwise it's probably not often you want to attach things to cards. The patches have to be thin and you shouldn't be able to tell anything about the card in a stack when playing. In this case I have printed these sigils on ordinary paper with some magnetic tape on the back side. I think this looks dope as heck. But honestly, it looking cool is probably the best it's gonna get. Let's talk about the downsides of making cards this way. I can't remember where I got these sheets of metal, but I remember them not being cheap. A lot less compared to the other methods, which I'll talk about in a moment. And I don't have any precise tools to cut in metal, so I'll have to line this as best as I can, and then probably ruin the lifespan of my scissors when cutting them. I have a corner cutter, so my own cards get a nice consistent roundness, but with the metal sheet it's really hard and tedious to round the corners, plus it feels like I'm ruining the cutter by doing this. Still, the edges are pretty sharp and it's really easy to cut yourself by accident. Like it does cut really deep. I did this as a joke, but man, my finger still hurts pretty bad. If you see any clips where I have some tape on my fingers, that clip was recorded after testing the sharpness of the card. Let's instead talk about the things I actually think you should do for attaching things to cards. Okay, it depends on how your deck is made. If you have professionally printed or laminated cards, it is in my opinion that Clued is the best way to go. Just take a thin layer and spread it out. And it's pretty decent in my opinion. Don't keep the adhesive on the card for too long, but it should still be relatively easy to remove without leaving residue. You could alternatively use a marker and draw on the cards and clean them after playing. It's not as cool as having an actual patch, but makes the game mechanics playable without too much effort. It does require you remember what the sigils look like though. Recently I saw a clip of someone using laminated cards, but left a slit open on the side, so you could just slide in a patch symbol and call it a day. I think this is one of the most seamless ways to attach sigils, since you can have them be super thin and really flush against the card. If laminating cards is too much effort, and you're okay with seeing that a card has patches, you could just use paper clips to hold the sigils in place. Not ideal, since you get to know that an upside down card is upgraded. One solution is to have paper clips for all cards, but I think that would be too tedious, since it's a bit hard to stack more than a few cards on top of each other. If you really need the extra flair of magnetic sigils, you could just do what I did for my first set of cards, put a thin layer of magnetic tape inside the card. Since I handmade my cards by printing on ordinary paper, then folding around cardstock, I could put a strip of tape in there. Even though the card itself is magnetic now, the magnetic force is very weak and barely interacts with other cards. Completely passable in my opinion. I have some variants which use magnetic tape on the entire card, but they did actually stick together sometimes, which didn't make this as a viable option. It's also more annoying to make. 
Uh, last thing about ferromagnetic cards. I know all the Bakugan cards work like this or had something similar, but I think that doesn't fall in line with what I'm trying to achieve in this video. Mm, yeah, so my honest thoughts are this. Magnets are super cool and it feels so satisfying placing a sigil on the card and just have it sit there. But it's too much work if it's being handmade like this. I bought a lot of printed cards and I think that anyone that is attempting this should go for the adhesive route. Alternatively, if you have your cards already laminated, you could go for the slide on the method. Awesome. Uh, my software for recording just broke uh, thrice. So I've, this is the third time I'm recording like this section and I'm a bit, a bit upset. Uh, how about you do me a favor, you press the like button uh, and I give you a video. You just enjoyed it, I've done my part, you do yours. Awesome, see ya, bye.